everyone and welcome to yet another episode of the Greekosophy channel, the channel where you learn everything about Greece. My name is Stam and in today's video I'm going to be reacting to yet another popular YouTube video about Greece. Now I have to apologize uh, for some of the lightning today on this video. Uh, I'm sitting in my living room and the weather here in the UK is strange. You get sunshine one second and then cloud the other. I haven't switched on any lights here, so it's a natural light. So sometimes you will see the sun coming out and reflecting on my face on this side while here is dark. So I apologize about that. So I was trying today to figure out which uh, video around YouTube to uh, comment on uh, or uh, react on. Uh, and for that, I asked YouTube itself for uh, some help. Um, what I mean by that is that uh, because you know we want to see how well or how bad the Glucosophy channel is doing on YouTube, uh, we have some analytics tools that YouTube provides. And one of those tools is to be able to see um, what other videos around YouTube people watched and on their right hand side, let's say, YouTube suggested other videos and some of them were from Glucosophy and they clicked and went to watch one of our videos. Uh, so one of the top videos on YouTube that has, say, directed uh, traffic to our channel uh, is from a YouTube channel called Walter's World. Um, now, I guess uh, the guy is called Walter and is traveling around the world. Uh, and that particular video is called Greece, 10 things that shock tourists in Greece. Uh, so I was very, very curious to see what uh, Walter has to do uh, say about Greece. Now I have kind of cheated here um, and have to explain why. I haven't actually watched this particular video about Greece but I wanted to know a little bit more about the channel Walter's World uh, and I've watched a few of uh, his other videos uh, and uh, it's a big channel, um, 444,000 uh, subscribers and I guess Walter travels around with his family. He's from the US, a uh, very funny chap, a uh, very witty chap, and I think he's married to a Greek lady, uh, or her lineage comes from Greece. Uh, he's traveled around the world with uh, his wife and the kids, uh, and uh, he's one of those people like me that likes to embrace the culture of the place he's traveling to. And a lot of his videos has to do with giving tips. Uh, if you travel to this particular country or this particular city, this is the things to watch for or be careful of. Um, and uh, in general, uh, tips and hints. Uh, so I have actually made sure that uh, I'm gonna subscribe to his channel because uh, if I wanna travel around uh, another part of the world, uh, not Greece, I will certainly use some of the tips. Uh, that what it has to do but without further ado i'm gonna put my trusted headphone zone so i don't have any feedback coming back and i'll be watching greece 10 things that shock tourists in greece and hopefully i will be able to add uh, some comments as to what uh, walter has to say um, i'm just curious to see what are those 10 things that shock people in greece i'm pretty sure that I have some of them in my mind, but let's see what Walter has to say. Let's go. Yes, as fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're in Aios Nikolos. Yes, I know I'm butchering the name, but it's Greek and you're never gonna get the names right. So just be ready for that. And today what we have for you are 10 things that shock tourists when they do come here to Greece. The first thing that kind of shocks tourists is the whole ne, ne. Nah, you think nah means no, no, no. Nah means yes when you're here. So you'll say, hey, is this something good I should eat? And they go, nah. You're like, oh, okay, I'll get something else. And they look at you like, dude, I just told you that was the good stuff. What are you doing? Or you might ask, hey, is the beach this way? And they go, nah. And you're like, oh, so you go the other direction. Look, nah means yes. Ohi means no, okay? So that's one thing that frustrates and shocks tourists the first time they come here, because the people are really friendly here, but that is one of those things, okay? Uh, yes, I, I agree with that. Um, Greeks don't necessarily only speak with words, but with gestures as well. Uh, so pretty much uh, what Walter said there, uh, uh, no means ohi, uh, sorry, ohi means no in Greece, uh, and yes is ne. Uh, so, you know, Sometimes uh, don't think that uh, by ne it means oh no it's ne, uh, but sometimes as well we will go like that, and that means yes as well, and or 
or uh, means no uh, so you have to get used to it uh, but yes he's spot on there uh, don't get confused now the second thing that might shock you when you come here are the beaches that are sprinkled with these beautiful purple tourists look the beaches in Greece are fantastic whether you're here in Crete or going to Peloponnese or wherever the beaches are awesome and the Sun is fantastic but you have to remember to wear sunblock people look I know my face is pretty red but this is nothing compared to what I've seen a lot of Scandinavian tourists they get here and they're all pasty white and the thing is you notice I got this nice breeze going here you don't mind the 35 40 degrees Celsius or the 90 to 100 degree weather when you're here because the wind doesn't really make it feel that hot. And so you go there and you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not getting burned. I don't feel any heat on me here, but it does happen. And you see the tourists literally go from super white in the morning to super purple by the afternoon. So please, 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 please use sunblock and use it often, okay? Because it will shock you how purple you can get when you are here, or at least some of the purple tourists you will see when you are here. That is so true. The amount of times and the amount of foreigners I have worn in Greece that I've seen them lying down with no uh, uh, sun tan protection at all, lie down for hours in midday when the sun is at its high. I say, guys, you're gonna ruin your holidays. You're gonna get up in the evening to go out and you're gonna be aching all over. And say, ah, oh, don't worry, you know, we're used to it. And they're not used to it. Um, Look, uh, even, you know, I'm Greek and when I lived in Greece, I didn't have much of a problem because my skin was, was used to that. I could uh, tan very, very easy. Uh, but even nowadays, when I go to Greece, initially on the first few days, I go, uh, I put on the highest uh, factor that I can get purely because whether it's the ozone layer that is no longer as strong, whether it is the climate that is becoming, you know, the sun is even hotter. Um, you have to be careful. The sun does burn a lot. Um, and the amount of people that suffer sunburns from day one, and you can see their faces peeling off the following day, they're in pain, they cannot even put a shirt on. Um, and it's, it's so difficult to, to, to try to explain to them, you know, I'm not trying to ruin your holidays, but you have to make sure that you last for the duration of your stay and you don't have any, any trouble. Um, and even when you're swimming, you know, if you don't put any protection, the sun is still gonna see these parts and this part of your body and you're gonna come out and you're gonna be peeling off uh, of, of skin. Uh, so it is very important that you use protection and try to avoid falling asleep at the beach, uh, especially around midday between, let's say 12.30 and 4.30 in the afternoon. Because uh, that's when the the strongest is uh, the sun's strongest is. Um, it is so easy to get um, you know so easy to get uh, in trouble with the sun. Um, something else that I've noticed here, uh, what I said originally at the start of the video that he's filming it from Agios Nikolos in Crete, a very lovely town. Uh, but um, th some of the of the other scenes of the video are not filmed in Agios Nikolos, so I guess he's using some other uh, shots from his travel around Greece, because I've seen obviously uh, the Parthenon in Athens um, and some other beaches that I couldn't recognize uh, as part of Crete. Uh, so I guess, you know, he's filming from Agios Nikolos, but he's showing uh, shots from other parts of Greece as well. But let's go to part three. Now, the third thing that shocks tourists when they come here, and being married to a, to a Greek woman, I can tell you, it's Greek time. Your concept of time does not mean the same thing here in Greece. When someone tells you five minutes, it probably means like 15. I know the other night we called up our friends and said, hey, we're about an hour away from getting to your Matoki, to your to your house, you know, your, your, your village house. And they're like, oh no, the food's gonna be ready in an hour. Oh no, oh no. They're like all worried that we're gonna be late for it. Well, we got there in an hour because I was telling the time. <laughs> and we got there and they said, oh, you're here so soon. And we had another two hours until the food was actually ready. So just know with Greek time, you always have to have a lot of patience when you go there or just realize, take whatever time they tell you and add like an hour. 
or onto it or something like that because that will get a little frustrating and a little shocking now the thing is though with that greek time it does not work when you're talking about trains buses planes stuff like that that stuff is usually on time but just know greek time is a different kind of time and speaking of taking those planes this <laughs> i guess i agree um now i'm not sure that even you know, even the Greek time, uh, I think it applies especially to buses as well, because I have experienced uh, delays with buses as well. But yes, um, especially for people coming from countries where everything runs to the second, uh, I don't know, Germany, Switzerland, I guess, these sort of countries. And it comes as a shock or it will come as a shock uh, because in, in Greece, uh, I guess, you know, people have their own a way of, of, of dealing with things um, it takes a while to get used to but on the other hand uh, I, I kind of see the, the not the reason behind it there's no reason behind it the only reason is that you know what's the point of stressing yourself you know um, uh, I, I see people at my line of work here in the UK that they live by the clock you know they they get up at, at set amount in the morning they, they rush to dash to the office, they get stressed because of the traffic, uh, because of uh, the commute uh, and the work, and then they come back from uh, work at set amount in the evening, uh, and they put something to eat, they watch some TV, they go to bed and repeat and repeat and repeat. Um, and, you know, in Greece, especially when you go on holidays, holidays means having a break from normal, from your normal life. So there's no point of going to Greece. And running by the clock again you know throw away your watch throw away your mobile uh, just just relax let let your body let's say determine what you're gonna do if you feel sleepy go to bed if you feel hungry have something to eat if you feel like a swim in the sea go and have a swim in the sea if you feel like waking up at 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon wake get up at 1 o'clock in the afternoon it's 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 and I guess in in some parts especially the islands uh, that installs to everyday life as well in that you know you don't expect to sit at the restaurant and have the person coming straight away or ordering the bill and the bill coming to you straight away uh, because you want to leave within the next couple of minutes just just relax you know life is not about stress life is about enjoying it not letting uh, time uh, dictate you you know be your own boss of your own time uh, let's put it this way uh, so I absolutely agree with Walter there. This is what I saw whenever I've flown in Greece. And the fourth thing that's going to shock you is the line culture here. Or I should say lack of line culture. Because remember, Greek time, I want to take my time. Siga, siga, slowly, slowly. And you're going to be in line someplace. And you'll make your nice line. But then they'll say, okay, it's getting time to board. And then this massive wave of people come. And Greeks don't do the lines. They just all massive rush to get in there. And you'll see that when you're driving, but I'll talk about that later. So just know, line culture, not really a big thing here in Greece. It's more of a mad dash kind of smushiness, but not like a mad dash because it's kind of slow. They just all kind of saunter up, la 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 la, and do that, okay? <laughs> yes, I mean, I, I said that in one of our episodes as well about the queues, that there's, a, there's no such a thing in Greece such as a queue. Um, you know, people gather around, whether it's waiting for the bus or etc. etc. And unless, for example, you're in a bank where they have a system where you have to like take a ticket with your number and you have to wait until your number is called, uh, there is no such a thing as, you know, somebody standing in the queue, etc. Very rarely, it happens very rarely. Uh, but it, it will be a matter of, you know, <laughs> survival of the fittest, I guess. You know, everybody walks around, you know, relax, etc., etc. Suddenly somebody's calling, oh, the bus is leaving. A dash, you know, for the bus. And again, it takes some use to, especially if you live in a country where, you know, it's uh, an order, queuing an order. But hey, uh, it's, it's one of those things, yes, that uh, might shock you. While in Greece, it definitely is something that uh, can be shocking to you for the first time. Now, the next thing that's going to shock you when you come here is when you drive in Greece. And look, if you're going to enjoy places like Crete or you're going to explore the Peloponnese and stuff like that, you do need to rent a car. Now, 
heads up to my American friends, you have to have an international driver's license to rent a car here. If you're from Europe, you're okay. But US, you gotta have that. And when you drive, the Greeks, they're all like little rally drivers and stuff like that. But what's really kind of crazy is when you're going around places like Crete or other places, small, sometimes there's smaller roads and hilly roads and stuff like that. And the people just go, go through them because they've been driving these things for years. So for you tourists, and me as a tourist, you can always tell who they are because they're going a bit slower, but also they're in the center of the lane. You might be shocked when you drive here in Greece. Don't be surprised if you actually drive on the shoulder of the road and you see people driving over there. So you see someone's trying to overtake you, just move over to the shoulder a little bit when you go and they'll go around you, all right? Um, I couldn't say it better myself, to be honest. Uh, Walter is spot on there. Now, Greeks are not necessarily bad drivers in the sense of knowing how to drive a car, uh, etc. Um, but are very unruly, very, very bad behaved drivers. Uh, they, they think that the road is just for themselves. Uh, you know, this is, this is me, get out of my way. Uh, and unfortunately, Greece has some of the worst um, records of uh, deaths or road traffic accidents uh, in Europe. Um, and that is part of that uh, so if you go to Greece for the first time and you decide to rent a car and drive it be very careful because you will see you know quite a lot of uh, bad driving going on you know uh, people not respecting let's say the zebra crossings uh, or overtaking where they shouldn't be overtaking uh, some uh, people you know not even wearing seat belts etc uh, etc et so that is one point that we have really to take it serious and not laugh about it because it is something that uh, unfortunately Greece hasn't uh, improved yet. <laughs> Now, the next thing that's going to shock you to come here is the hospitality of the people. Look, if you try a little bit of Greek out on people, they're going to be so happy, so warm and inviting to you that yes, you might get invited to go to somebody's house or go to a, a reopening of a church or, or whatever. And the people really take in foreigners. They take in people that are their friends, people they feel that are family, people they really like. They take them in and they show them such a good time. I can't tell you how many old Greek men are now friends of mine because we've been drinking some Ritzina or some raki together and just talking about things and if they didn't speak much english we still did okay because the hospitality here the greeks really take you in and what leads off of that friendliness and helpfulness oh they also speak english really really well here in greek or in greece young people to older people so that's fantastic um yes uh again i said it in one of the other episodes uh, of our channel um if you try to speak even little words in greek and be open to interact with Greeks. Uh, you will make uh, some of the best uh, acquaintances uh, you will have, uh, and you will get invited into somebody's own house uh, for a meal and a feast and uh, a glendy uh, um, and a party, <laughs> and uh, you will be invited back to Greece again on your next travels. So yes, even if you are there for the first time in your life and you feel a bit awkward starting conversation with a Greek person, don't feel. Uh, they, <laughs> they love talking, especially about Greece, uh, but pick up any subject, whether it's football or Greece or history or, or anything really, just start a conversation uh, and be, be, be open. They, they are very hospitable, very, very open. Uh, even in the villages when you arrive with your car initially and, and they, you know, you have like maybe old people sort of looking at you and staring at you, you think, oh my God, you know, why are they staring like that? Now, sit in a taverna and, you know, start a conversation with somebody and pretty much uh, in a few minutes you will have the, the whole taverna sort of talking to you and having a good time. 
So yes, make sure when you go to Greece that you, you bond with Greeks because that would be an extra bonus to your holidays. But another thing that kind of leads on from that hospitality side of it is when you go and you eat here, the sizes of the portions. Look, I'm a big American man and this big American man likes big American meals and stuff like that. Here in Greece, they've got even bigger sized meals. And you'll be shocked at how much they want to feed you and feed you and feed you some more. I know in our Don'ts of Greece, I said, look, if you get invited to a Greek's house, don't eat for like 12 hours beforehand because they will feed you, feed you, feed you, and then water you and then feed you some more and then give you some more stuff. Look, the portion sizes here are enormous, so expect to share with people. So you got four or five people, maybe get three dishes and share like that. You can always order more. And the thing is the food here is fantastic and it's fresh and you'll eat tons of local food. If you're here in Crete, you're gonna eat Cretan food or <laughs> Cretan food. If you're in other parts of Greece, there's all this regionality, you're really gonna love it. One of the things I love the best is the seasonal fruit and vegetables you'll have. And you'll see when you finish your meal, they'll bring some fruit, you have dessert. It'll be watermelon now in July and other times of years it'll be sika or figs. And you'll have that and it's so great. But by the time they bring it to you, you're like, oh, I'm so full, I cannot eat anymore. Oh. So that is kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, Greeks, as I've already keep on saying to you, uh, love to eat. Uh, so expect big portions. Expect a lot of plates in the middle of the table sharing. Um, I love the fact that Walter's kid there was uh, eating, I think it was Marida, uh, which is, uh, you know, the little fish deep, deep fried, you eat them all together. Uh, you know, some uh, non Greek kids might go, oh my god, I don't want to eat that. Uh, so I'm glad that he's uh, eating there. Uh, but yes, uh, food, food, uh, food culture in Greece is, is part of life. Uh, so um, whenever you go out and uh, make sure that if you're not a person that eats a lot then you don't order way too many things but you know pace yourself uh, but as Walter said uh, seasonality is 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 great uh, and also to try local dishes uh, I <laughs> I cannot stress that enough because I see a lot of foreign people that go to Greece and they you know go to places that serve pizza <laughs> or even fish and chips uh, or or uh, McDonald's and things like that and I'm like come on man you come to Greece uh, one of the best cuisines in the world fresh food amazing flavors uh, and 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 you don't want to come out of your comfort zone and try some of the dishes um, and as I said if you don't know what to get ask it's as simple as that ask what is the traditional dish dish here or let's say if you like chicken what is a great local traditional dish with chicken and, and, and take it this way uh, so you know to go to Greece to visit Greece and not try some of the dishes in Greece it's how can I say um, it's it's like going to New York and not going to see the Statue of Liberty for example um, it's, it's 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 like that <laughs> it's as simple as that now another thing you might notice and I guess our next thing that might shock you when you come here is when you go to someone's house or when you're going around the cities you might notice it looks like a lot of buildings aren't finished maybe there's a stairwell that doesn't have the railing or maybe there's some rebar sticking out of the top of a building look the safety measures here are or the safety codes I should say are not as strictly enforced, it seems like, as in other places. Also, if you don't finish your building here in Greece, you know, finish it all off, you don't have to pay the taxes on it quite yet. So that might drive some more people to leave a few things unfinished. So that might be something to look out for. But you will be shocked if you see some things and go, man, shouldn't that be covered up? Hey, shouldn't there be a wall here? Hey, what's going on here? So just know for that. And, and if you're an adult, it's not really a big issue. But if you got little kids, you might want to pay attention to some uh, of those yes. things. Um, now I've left Greece in, in 89, so uh, when I was still living there, I don't know if that law still exists, but there was a law that basically, let's say that you bought the land to build a house, um, you could basically build a house there, uh, but let's say you had plans maybe for your children or your grandchildren later on to have their own houses or their own flats above, uh, basically you could build your house but leave it unfinished so you put a roof uh, but leave it unfinished so you have like a not like a roof like that but like a plain roof 
um, and you wouldn't pay tax yet on the house because it was considered that it was still under construction uh, or along those lines and that is why when I used to live in Greece uh, but it's still in some places you, you, you will see an overhead photo of a city and it would be like all the houses <laughs> weren't finished with uh, you know metal bars extending outside now I don't know if that still exists or if you have some maybe tax benefits of doing that uh, still uh, but you can still find places uh, and you can see most probably the picture there uh, that some of the roofs of those houses may look as if they're not finished yet uh, so yes there the, the, the used to be tax benefits I don't know if that's the case anymore uh, if you still live in Greece or you're a tax expert in Greece just let us know in the comments below uh, because I would also like to know now the next thing that's going to shock you is visiting the islands one because the islands here whether you're going to Crete or Rhodes or Santorini or whatever they are gorgeous with amazing beaches like I talked about before great regional food but they get packed with tourists in the summer like insane packed okay well, what's crazy in the winter time they're almost empty and here in Crete we get snow in Crete and that kind of shocks people they say oh I'll go off season to the islands it'll be great no you'll be shocked how empty it will be and how not hot grease you expect it to be. So just a heads up for that one. But in general, the islands are fantastic. So do definitely come here. Um, I will say though, you might be shocked when you take those ferries and you don't get a room or you don't fly to the islands and you've got an overnight ferry, but you have no room and you're like trying to watch your stuff while you're in the restaurant room and stuff like that. It can be a bit, a bit much, okay? Um, a bit of clarification here to what I said. Greeks plenty of beautiful islands and diverse islands as well uh, Greece has a lot of islands and they're all beautiful and uh, they're not <laughs> the same um, with regards to the weather um, <laughs> nowadays the weather has gone mental all around the world anyway uh, so even in the island of Crete which I would guess it's nearer to the north part of Egypt than the rest of Greece in a sense uh, there are occasions, for example this year, that it snowed in, in the entire island of Crete uh, and that can be you know, a very rare thing. There are very high mountains in Crete that you know, maybe very often they get snowed under, but not all of Crete. Uh, the north of Greece, the north part of Greece, does have heavy winters, um, but from let's say the central Greece and going southwards normally the climate it's quite okay even in the winter times uh, but as I said the, the, the weather nowadays can get crazy and you can get you know uh, snowstorms in Greece while in the UK here we have a bit of a rain and nothing else uh, but at the same time you know in spring and summer you can get heat waves as well you know 40 plus degrees uh, that it's not very comfortable to be out there. Um, something else as well, that is something that I can never ever understand even nowadays. Um, generally the climate of Greece, in Greece is great th throughout the year. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, between let's say end of October and, and uh, beginning of, of March, suddenly the flights to Greece, and especially the islands, are non-existent. Uh, even though, even if you go uh, around you know, January or February, etc., you would still enjoy Greece. Um, it, it's beautiful, you know, you can get, especially in the south of Greece, a nice climate. Or even in the north of Greece, you know, you can get snow up in the mountains. It, it's really, it's really great. Uh, but for some reason, the tourist industry doesn't seem to appreciate that Greece is an all year round destination. And therefore, uh, unfortunately, a lot of tourists miss out on that. Uh, unless they have Greek friends, uh, they miss out on, on that. And that causes that reduction or stop of uh, flights to Greece and the Greek islands. Essentially, that makes Greek islands, especially the smaller, the more remote ones, to effectively close down for the season uh, of winter and uh, late uh, autumn and just have basically the locals living there. Um, so if you're a poet or a, a writer and you want to have peace and quiet, I guess that would be the best part 
of the year to uh, uh, go and live in a remote uh, small uh, Greek island because you only have the locals there and you have the, all the time and the place to yourself uh, and you can concentrate and maybe get some great ideas about your next project. Um, but this is something that I can never understand. Uh, I think Greece is missing a great opportunity to have tourism all year round um, and not just tourists coming for the sea, but coming for the snow, uh, coming for you know the food, for, um, for uh, many parts, for arts, uh, for uh, uh, you know, even religious, let's say, uh, traveling, um, because Greece is, uh, Greek people are very religious. Um, it's, it's, it's just a pity that they just use Greece only for spring and summer. Uh, whoever is hearing, whoever is listening to this, uh, if you're a travel agent or, or a Greek uh, prime minister or a Greek MP that actually does care about Greece, please take a note of that and do something about it because that is really not good. Now another thing that might shock you when you come to Greece, which I don't think would be very shocking, is all the ancient Greek and Roman artifacts you do find in Greece. Yes, you do go up the Acropolis and the Parthenon and see that. You go to Delphi and see that thing it's there. You go to Marathon, you go to Olympia, you go to all these places. Here you go to Knossos and Crete, you see history. The stuff you read about in your textbooks in school, it's happening here. It happened here. You can go see it and take a part of it. And the people love their country and the pride they have in Greek history will come out in the food, in the conversations you have, in museums you go to, how well kept up they are, how much people care about them, and how much they share in them. And that's what's awesome is you have these historic places and sites you can go to. I mean, I love Athens, but going to the old castle. Absolutely. Um, one thing that uh, Walter there said, uh, Greeks are very proud of their country and their heritage and their history. Uh, and be careful when you speak to them that you are not offensive because uh, they don't take that very well. Um, I think there was a savory some years ago from an American magazine uh, to find out which countries uh, had the most, um, let's say, passionate um, uh, people about their country. And Greece came first with Cyprus second. Uh, so you can see there, I think it was Poland third. Poland third. Um, it, it shows how very patriotic we are about Greece. Um, but yes, <laughs> with so much history, uh, Greece is full of ancient monuments, not just out in the open, but underground. Uh, no matter where you dig, you will find <laughs> ruins of some form or another. And that has caused problems as well in Greece, uh, because, you know, they, by law, let's say you buy a plot of land to build something. If you start digging and you suddenly discover ancient artifacts or ruins, the archaeological, uh, let's say, part of the government can actually stop uh, and take over your land. Um, I don't know how much you will get as compensation or even if you will get compensation or it might be just a long delay until they dig everything up and they take it to a museum. Uh, but I have heard stories of people actually digging, finding something, covering it up <laughs> and digging above and not telling <laughs> anybody about it. Uh, and a pretty, a, a pretty recent one is um, in Salonika, the second largest city in Greece, where they are uh, building a metro network underneath the city. Uh, and it keeps on getting delayed because they keep on finding more and more and more and more ancient ruins and artifacts. And, uh, you know, we're talking about a country here of thousands and thousands of years of, of history. And uh, it's, it's a given that ancient cities would have been one on top of the other uh, over the centuries. Um, and it is, uh, you know, it is great if you love your history and your mythology to go and visit these places. <laughs> but if you're a Greek uh, and you would like to build a, a house or, or starting a business that uh, involves digging the, the earth to do that, it can be a little bit problematic as well. <laughs> You've been warned.
capital of Nathlio and hiking up to the fortress on top of the hill is one of the things you got to do. And you have these things with the monasteries you can go to and get, you know, the little cable cars up and stuff like that. There's so many cool places to check out that it's not just a beach vacation place. It's history. There's cool cities and cool places to go with these wonderful people when you are here. So some other shocks when you do come here to Greece, we're actually in Athens right now. And one is how much the Greeks really smoke. I mean, you will see ashtrays everywhere. I mean, it's like a 1970s Christmas party with every kid making a freaking ashtray for their parents. There is a lot of smoke in here. So just a heads up for that one. Yes, unfortunately, Greeks uh, are some of the big chase smokers of the world. And even though the law uh, prohibits smoking in public, sorry, in, um, uh, you know, uh, closed spaces and public offices, etc., unfortunately uh, in the majority of situations uh, that is not followed uh, which is a pity um, because it is a habit that unfortunately hasn't stopped in greece so yes be prepared to see a lot of people smoking um, and be prepared to walk into a bar or, or a restaurant where people will be smoking uh, around you uh, and unfortunately there will be the occasion where you might say to the waiter guys you know they're not supposed to be smoking here and, and the waiter might apologize to you but not do anything about it because of the last past of 10 12 years of financial problems uh, a business owner does not want to turn people away uh, and lose their custom even if it means that uh, people might have to suffer from that person smoking yes uh, but uh, if you're not a smoker or if you live in a country that uh, smoking has been banned uh, you might <laughs> find yourself um, in a shock when you go to Greece especially to big cities Ireland is is all right because you're in an open air uh, so it might not be a big of a problem but in the big cities it might be another thing that shocks people when they come here are the bathrooms in terms of what you should know is the pipes here are a little older so you might notice that you have to throw the toilet paper not into the toilet but into the trash can next to the toilet there'll be signs telling you to do that and when you get to tourist places they'll say it even more often so just a heads up for that one um uh, i have already explained that in another video if you just click uh on top of your screen right now you can go there uh walter explained it very briefly and uh, very uh, very good yes it has been an issue for as long as i live and uh, for some reason or another uh, the government is not fixing it maybe because it's too costly i don't know uh, but it's something that unfortunately you have to get used to when in greece and it takes a little bit of getting used to um, unfortunately the the pipes that to take the wastage uh, uh, out are not as as big as in other countries they're too small so if you throw even toilet paper in them uh, they will clog up the system so unfortunately you cannot throw the toilet paper uh, in the cubicle there is a tiny bin next to it that you will put there the, the toilet paper also you might be shocked at a lot of times the tavernas and cafes and stuff the toilets don't have toilet seats it's just the toilet ring there with no little seat cover yeah that's that's basically um i would say is uh, maybe because the toilet seat broke and the owner can be bothered to buy a new one that's the explanation, basically. It's as simple as that. Another thing that shocked me is when you go to buy the tavernas and the cafes around Greece, especially the small villages, you don't see the ayahs, you don't see the grandmas. You see a bunch of old men sitting outside the tavernas, talking, having a coffee and a sandwich and discussing, you know, Greece and all kinds of stuff. But you're like, where are the yayas? Where are the grandmas? And it does kind of shock you when you do see that. Anyway, we'll go back to me being overly excited on- Yes. Um... And even when you go to a big gathering, let's say, you might see that the men sit with the men and the women with the women, or if there's a long table, uh, during, <laughs> during the conversation, etc., suddenly people are switching positions and you can suddenly find that half of the table is all the men and half of the table is all the women uh, speaking about their you know, things and men speaking about other things. Uh, but yes, uh, especially outside the big cities, even now, the the uh, the cafe neo uh, which is not a taverna it's it's ma it's mainly a place where 
uh, people used to have a, a coffee or a soft drink and spend their time. Normally the Cafe Neon, you will only find men there. It's the, let's say, the, the hanging <laughs> place for men. Uh, after work, uh, they will go there, they will have a beer or ouzo with a little bit of nibbles, they play some backgammon and some cards, uh, and they will, you know, they, they will just talk about everything. And uh, the women will stay at home or uh, you will find them outside in the gardens or etc. Uh, sitting and uh, basically talking uh, about women things. Um, obviously nowadays, especially in the big cities, uh, you will, you know, you will see uh, people going. But the yayas, the grandmother, yes, they are the old school. And unfortunately, <laughs> the old school where the man goes out to meet the men, the woman stays at home and looks after the kids and cleans the house and cooks. Uh, and the yayas unfortunately grew up under uh, that period and therefore uh, for them to go out um, and, and, and be in the Cafe Neon on their own, oh my god, you know, what uh, the village is going to say or what the neighbours are going to say. So no, the yaya, if the yaya wants to socialise, she will call the other yayas and have a coffee in the house, etc. Uh, and they will talk about it uh, there. Um, if the husband wants to take the yaya to a tavern or whatever, that, that's fine. But uh, yes, the yayas don't normally socialize that that much. Concrete to finish off the shocks. And my last little shock that we're going to have for you is when you ask for the bill. Now, most places you ask for the bill, they bring it to you, you pay, you leave. Here in Greece, it doesn't work that way. You ask for the bill, oh, they bring you some raki or ouzo or rizina or something. They bring you a liquor. Like it'll come in a little bottle. You think, oh, am I getting some water to finish off with? No, that's alcohol. If you got kids, they'll bring them something else. But you have that and then you have your raki and they might have a yogurt dessert or maybe some fruit there for you. You have that and then they bring the bill. And I've seen a few tourists getting shocked. Like, no, I don't want any more stuff. I want my bill. Look, relax, siga, siga, slowly, slowly enjoy Greece because it is a fantastic place. Absolutely. Um... You know, is what I said at the beginning and also in, in, in other videos. Um, now, it doesn't happen to everyone, okay? So don't go to a Greek restaurant expecting to get something for free uh, immediately. But if you, if you like to socialize and you speak to the owner, to the waiter, etc., and you're friendly, that is more likely to happen to you uh, and your family in that, you know, the minute you order the bill or even before you uh, order the bill, when you finish your meal, uh, in Greece, we don't normally order desserts. Normally, we have, uh, you know, fruit uh, as our desserts, etc. But once you offer the meal, suddenly you will see the waiter bringing some shots, and it will be the, you know, uh, uh, normally the local fire water. It can be raki, it can be, you know, tsipuro, um, uh, and they must probably bring some uh, yogurt with honey or some fruits, etc., uh, as a treat. Uh, it will be a treat, it will not going to be part of your bill, so don't get scared about that. Uh, but yes, that is part of, of the fun. And like Walter said, relax, chill out, man, chill out, you know. Don't, don't live by your watch while you're in Greece. You're on holiday. You make up the time. Anyway, I know this is a quick windy video on Greece, but it's such a fantastic place. I got really, really excited about it, so it wasn't as siga, siga, slowly, slow as it should be, but I hope it does help you out. If you want to learn more about visiting Greece, what you should know before you come here, the don'ts of Greece, all kinds of stuff, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we really appreciate your likes, subscriptions. We hope you have a great time here in Greece, but we know you will, and I'll be shocked if you don't because the food's fantastic, the people are fantastic, tons of English, awesome tourism infrastructure, and sun, it's great. Bye from Greece. Bye, Walter. I, I, I really enjoyed that video. I hope you did as well. Uh, pretty much spot on in everything he said uh, and you know I couldn't agree more in uh, what he said there uh, and sun of course the sun uh, I'm, I'm missing it I'm missing it uh, so yes I hope you enjoyed this video it was a pretty quick one uh, not a lot of food this time um, but you know um, I'm gonna put the link to this actual video and also link to Walter's World the social media on the description of this video uh, and in case that you want to have uh, more of, uh, of me looking at videos about Greece, just let me know any videos that you want me to have a look on 
uh, in the description below. Uh, but uh, thank you for watching this particular video. Don't go away. If you enjoy me uh, providing a reaction to videos about Greece on YouTube, uh, in a few seconds around your screen, there will be some other reaction videos that I have uploaded so you can enjoy them. Uh, but for now, thank you very much, Walter's World. Thank you very much. Keep watching.